This is what I read in September. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and today is going to be my September wrap up. September was a really solid reading month. I read 12 books, so let's go through them in the order that I read them. Starting off the month on my Kindle, I read A Flame and Starlight by Dana Islay, who is an indie author that I absolutely adore. And this book is definitely for fans of Akotar, but age it up, let's make it spicy. And this is the first book in the Esoteria series. I actually read it in one night. Like I went to go read it in bed at like 9 p.m. And I'm like, all right, I'll just read until I fall asleep. I fell asleep after I finished the entire thing. So that's how you know it was captivating. Alice grew up hearing stories about the Fae that were hunting her, dark, powerful creatures. Her mother moved them from city to city, warning her about them, but Alice thought that they were just tales and her mother was eccentric. Once her mother was gone and she was left on her own, she let her guard down. She is found, marked, and taken. Asher is tall, dark, handsome, and Faye. He claims he took Alice from the human world for her own safety, but she doesn't trust him or the dangerous feelings he stirs within her. Forced to live under the same roof as her captor, Alice learns that there is more to her story than she originally thought. So I just thought that this was a really fun, obviously, is a Taken by the Faye storyline. I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. Like I said, it was just really easy to read and I devoured it in the whole night and it definitely had some twists and turns, had some good spicy scenes and so I'm really looking forward to picking up the next book in the series whenever it comes out because I'm interested to see where the story is going to go from here. Next I read Gods and Monsters by Shelby and Marin and I've been following the series ever since Serpent and Dove came out two years ago. So here we have all of the books together. So this is the concluding novel in the trilogy. In Serpent and Dove we follow Lou who has fled from her coven and taken refuge in the city of Caesarine. However in Caesarine there are these people known as chasseurs that are part of the church and their basically whole purpose is to hunt witches and after a public stunt lands Lou married to Reed who is a chasseur and from there it's a witch and a witch hunter bound in holy matrimony things get crazy the second novel in the series really expanded the world a lot and introduced a lot of new plot lines and I feel like gods and monsters did a really good job wrapping them all up and like dealing with the heartbreak of all of these characters. And I gave it five stars. I just adored this whole series. I really feel like Shelby Marin does a good job of always keeping tension between the, the main characters, like the main couple, because I feel like in a three book arc where they get together in the first book, sometimes it can be difficult to maintain that like angst throughout the whole series. So I felt like that part was well done and I just loved all the characters and all the side characters and even some of the characters I didn't like in the beginning I grew to have an appreciation for towards the end and I feel like this conflict just came to a head and was wrapped up really nicely. I do think that there were some pacing issues like in the middle but I don't even mind that because I love this book so much and I just adore this series so much. Definitely one of my favorite witchy series and I love Lou and Reed as a couple. I just adore them. Next, I read Priceless by Miranda Silver, which is on Kindle Unlimited, I believe. In this book, we follow Christina, who is pretty much like at a very low point in her life. She just quit the cheer squad and she's trying to prove to her parents that she doesn't need their money. And so she is a bit down on the funds. And this guy that she's always been intrigued by, Patrick, hears about this and basically offers her a job to be with him and he will pay her every time. And it's like in the form of like a dom sub relationship so this is definitely an 18 plus book um i ended up giving it five stars i loved it i just thought it was very well done the relationship was developed beautifully very very steamy um but if you are into that kind of dynamic with like money and humiliation it could be good to check it out Next, I read The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, which this book just makes me smile so much. It might be my new all-time favorite rom-com, or it's at least tied with The Hating Game. Like, I loved it so much. And if you see on the cover, like, if this looks like Raylo from Star Wars for you, yes, it was originally Raylo fan fiction, and the author decided to publish it, like, you know, change all the names and stuff like that, but you can definitely realize parallels to the original characters obviously however it was like an au to begin with alternate universe so we have olive smith who is a third year phd candidate um, and she doesn't really believe in lasting romantic relationships but her best friend does and that's what got her into the situation she told her best friend that she was on a date because her best friend was interested in this guy that olive went on like one date with and didn't really hit it off with 
but she obviously her best friend didn't want to step on all of the toes however when she is lying about going on the date she just goes into lab that night and she sees her friend at the end of the hallway so obviously she kisses the first guy that she sees to make it seem like she is on a date and that first guy that she sees is Adam Carlson, a young hotshot professor and a well-known app. So when the reigning lab tyrant of the school actually agrees to fake date her to keep up the charade, she is just like blown away and now they become fake boyfriend and fake girlfriend. Things go from there. Oh my god, okay. So like, I loved it so much. The relationship was so cute. The tension was just kept all the time and Myself as a woman in STEM, um, I really feel like this book actually like tackles some of the sexism that women in STEM and the sciences face and I feel like it was important to have a book like discussing that and especially like in a format that was fun as well. Um, this was everything and the lab setting was everything. Like I loved it. Obviously I gave it five stars, like new favorite rom -com. I am uh, obsessed with this book. Like I am like, is it too soon for a reread? Because I want to reread it and annotate it because I originally read an arc on my Kindle. Like. I loved this book so much. It's definitely like blowing up everywhere for a reason because it is amazing. Next, I read The Dare by Harley Leroux, and this is a book that has been removed before from Kindle for being too spicy, and you know I love the books like that. And so this book takes place on Halloween. We have prom queen Jessica and the like outcast kid Manson and like she used to bully him in high school but she was always like kind of attracted to him and now they're back for like a Halloween party in college and the roles are flipped and basically like it starts as a game of beer pong and it goes into a game of truth or dare and like he dares her to do anything that he wants for the entire night. And it progresses from there it is extremely spicy like please check the content warnings and the trigger warnings before you read this if you can handle the dark content though wow it was it was very good i gave it five stars i just feel like it kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time that i was reading it i actually read it on my phone like in a very short amount of time because it is a novella and it's spooky because it's halloween themed so maybe give it a whirl Next, I read the play by L. Kennedy. This is her Briar U series, which is the spin-off series, the off-campus series. This one we follow Hunter, who basically has decided not to date anymore because he feels like it's interfering with his ability to be captain of the hockey team. And because of that, he befriends a girl, Demi, and he's like, wow, this is great. Like, I can just be friends with the girl. And then she breaks up with her boyfriend, and he's like... Maybe I do have feelings for her. Oh, and they're paired up for a year-long school project. So I ended up giving this one three stars. I thought it was like pretty solid, but for me, um, with this series, I feel like the like formula for this series is just getting a bit repetitive, and I feel like the magic is wearing off a bit. So it didn't blow me away or anything. And like I felt like the chemistry was there, but like I wasn't like so enraptured in it. And then we also have the Dare by L. Kennedy, which follows Taylor and Connor, and I also give this one three stars. Just basically for the same reasons however in this one we have taylor who's like in a sorority and she kind of feels like she doesn't really fit in in the sorority and like they dare her to get with this guy that like gets with all the ladies and like he agrees to you know go along with the shenanigans so it's like a fake dating type thing and there's just been a lot of that in this series already i did appreciate in this book that taylor is plus size and there was a conversation around like body positivity and all of those types of things so I like that about this book but yeah like I said getting to the end of the series and I was like it just feels kind of like the same thing over and over next I read City of Thorns by C.N. Crawford and Loki loved it was not expecting it and it gave me like Crescent City vibes but like erotica kind of like it didn't really get super spicy in this one but I feel like it's going to get spicier the series is the Demon Queen Trials so I think the next book is supposed to come out in January but it might be out sooner I don't know. So the way that this book is set up is that there is the city of Thorns, which is the demon city, and the demon cities are like in the human world. So humans know about the existence of demons. And like you can only go into the demon city if you have like special permission, like if you study at the university there and whatnot. And so our main character, Rowan, wants to go into the demon city to figure out who killed her mom because she knows that it is a demon. 
And what happens is she's at the bar with her best friend on her birthday and this demon known as the Lord of Chaos comes in and is like, oh my god, it's you, I hate you, and like wants to kill her and like captures her and it turns out that she looks exactly like the last succubus which is like a type of demon that feeds off of lust and like like an exact replica and she's like i'm mortal and i'm not this demon that you were looking for and he's like all right well while you're here like i can use you to my advantage like sal chaos and like make everyone think that this dina demon the last succubus mortana is back and like mortana was like a bad bitch but like not necessarily like in a good way like she was a very selfish and like would just cause problems for everyone so rowan and like an anxious college student goes undercover as a succubus in the demon city and like it just gets crazy from there i honestly thought it was so much fun to see her trying to like play at being this badass demon while like having all these insecurities like it was just so much fun and like i loved the demon love interest our lord of chaos you could definitely tell that like it was one of those book relationships where like you can't tell if the feelings are like real or is he just faking it for the sake of the charade because she's like spying it was really good i gave it 4.5 stars and i'm so excited to continue on with the series because it literally ended on like oh my god such a huge cliffhanger i was like that's how it's gonna end i need to know what happens next so definitely definitely check this one out if you want like a paranormal or slash fantasy romance with demons in a demon city oh loved it so now i'm gonna get into the three books that i end up reading for my romantic cfl we have a court of honey and ash by shannon mayer and Kelly st Clair. and don't let the similarity of the title to akatar dissuade you from reading this because it is quite different so i ended up giving this four stars ali is a half human half fey orphan and basically when you are have human blood in the fey world you go into the underhill and you train there and you have to pass a trial to like figure out like what level of the fey society you are going to join when you go back and in order to like join you have to swear an oath to the underhill which is the fey homeland like where they draw power from and it's another dimension but like currently all the fey live in the human dimension that's like where their cities are so when ali takes her oath to the fey the underhill shatters and there's no more underhill and basically the fey are starting to go mad because they're losing their tie to their power and so she is kind of like forced on the run and she's being hunted by the boy she once thought she loved and she has to figure out what the heck went on when she took her oath because she didn't like do anything and to figure out like what actually happened to the underhill i thought that this one was really unique um and i loved the fey story i felt like it was a really good adventure with a solid romance and i loved just like a good fey story and i thought that it was really interesting with the way that the fey like cities were in the human world um like the humans knew about like the fey but like they would be like tourists in the the fey cities like humans would come and like go on tours of the fey cities which i just, I just thought was kind of cool like a different element that i don't normally see like normally fey and humans aren't inter intermingling so yeah it was a really solid start to a new fantasy romance series and then I read The Savage and the Swan by Ella Fields. And we have Opal, who is a very sheltered princess because she is the last in her line. Also, this is a fae book. I didn't realize that before I went into this. So she's very sheltered because she's the last of her line and she's like precious and they're trying to preserve their line and they don't want anything to happen to her. So she's like kept locked away and she like really wants to be more useful in the war. And then we have the Wolf King, who is the tyrant that they are hiding her from. And basically when she hears plans that she's going to be married to like a human prince she runs away and she runs into the arms of the wolf king i gave this one a four stars definitely there was some really good steamy scenes like knife to throat steamy scenes i enjoyed that aspect of it a lot and like our wolf king he is very morally gray like one of the most morally gray maybe even a little villainous love interests that i have read in a fantasy romance so if you are looking for something that is fantasy romance but definitely on the darker side i totally suggest this one then next i read radiance by grace draven and in this one we have ildiko who is the niece to the king 
and basically she's known her whole life that she's gonna be married for the sake of a political alliance and but she doesn't realize that she's gonna be married to one of the Kai which are a different species and so they get married and they kind of realize that like they are not attracted to one another like they're not attracted to the other species they both think that the other one is ugly and yet they like form a friendship in the beginning and a bond and they're like all right well we're in this together and they just kind of both think of themselves as like spares as time goes on and they just like develop this beautiful friendship their relationship blossoms into something more there are opposing forces from other kingdoms that are jealous of the alliance between Iljiko's kingdom and the Kai and they are trying to dismantle their relationship from the outside and I ended up giving it three stars just because I felt like it was just a little bit too slow paced for me like I just didn't feel like the stakes were super high but like the development of the relationship from friends to lovers in this story was very beautiful and just really like slowly seeing them like start to be attracted to one another and like put aside their prejudices for the other species i just thought was very very well done and then the last book that i read in september is the grim rose girls by laura Poole. i'm very excited for this one it comes out like october 26th so i think it's coming out like relatively soon maybe next week from when this video is up and this one's a really fun we have these four girls at the grim rose academy and basically they all have unknown fairy tale fates so they have their friend who has drowned she has red hair she drowned in a lake sound familiar um and basically they are trying to investigate what has happened to her what has caused her death because they don't think that it's a suicide and what they come to find is this book that may lead them to their fates and they have to figure out how this book is tied into what is happening at the school and what is happening to them and like what are their fairy tale fates? So I ended up giving this one five stars. I thought it was just like a really fun dark academia with fairy tale vibes. So it gave me like dark Disney vibes, and I just thought that that was so fun because we have this mystery element like who died, like did, was Ari killed, like, and then these girls have to figure out like what is happening to them, and it's just beautiful. Like the relationships that developed in this are beautiful. Like I love the friendship, and I just like thought that it was just a very clever idea to have these girls fates tied to fairy tales because it was just really fun that way and i really adored this book and i hope that you guys read it too all right so that is it for my september wrap-up i know that i'm usually long-winded so i've been trying to make these wrap-ups shorter more to the point let me know if you like them usually i'll try and go into more detail in my goodreads reviews so my goodreads is linked down below check it out if you want um and that is it so thank you so much for watching comment a little ghosty down below because it's october i'm in the ghosty mood and if you watched this far and enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe because any engagement helps my channel which has been struggling a little bit at the moment so i would like to continue making youtube videos so anyways thank you for watching and have some fun read some books i'll catch you guys in the next one